Welcome back to Sip the Tyler Film. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today on Ravens Daily, the first day of March, March 1st, 2024, we're going to talk a little bit about draft content. First thing on my mind was Keon Coleman. Now, we saw Keon Coleman talk to the whole draft, well, not the draft, the whole combine, you know, list of reporters today. And he was asked about, you know, the possibility of playing with uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Here's what he had to say about that. Keon, going like back to, to your meeting with the Ravens, what do you feel about the prospect of playing with Lamar Jackson, the MVP of the league right now? I would be grateful for that. And if they bring over Dell back, that'll be better. That's a great guy to learn from because I don't even see him as a vet. Like He's still legit in my eyes. So being able to play with him, Lamar, Jay Flowers, Charles Bateman, that'll be like, that'll be a dream. And then how has Florida State prepared you for the pro level? Uh, like I said, uh, that transition was, was smooth. I uh, had to go in there with my receiver room over without words, just work. And, you know, just learning that new playbook is the same thing I have to do when, it, when I get drafted. So that was like, that was different. And moving to a new city, new state, and adjusting to that was perfectly fine. Like, I, I feel confident going into the season. Now, I've already put out a video about Keon Coleman. You can go check that out on the channel. But I wanted to give you a few quick stats about Keon Coleman if you don't know you know, about what he is and what he's about. Again, he's from Florida State, 6'4", 215 pounds. Um, and the interesting facts about Keon Coleman, um, he had 50 catches, uh, 658 yards, 13.2 yards per catch, 11 touchdowns. He was a punt returner also. So I don't have the punt return stats, but if you go look up his highlights on different YouTube channels or whatever, you'll see he was a punt returner. And um, unfortunately, he returns some punts versus my beloved Hurricanes, but Keon Coleman, is the, he's the real deal. Uh, the main stats for him is his drops. He had two drops this whole year. Um, they came in the Louisville game. His drop percentage for the entire year is 3.8, which is a phenomenal number. Uh, contested catches, which is what I think the Baltimore Ravens need, a big body guy that we can work in the red zone and go along with Mark and Likely. His contested catch percentage is 33.3%. He had 10 contested catches, but a lot of times he was just open. He was just open, and you'll see that from if you go back and watch the video I did on Keon Coleman also. Had an amazing catch, one-hand catch versus Syracuse. So, um, you know, adding Keon Coleman at pick 30 would be great. Uh, it'd be another weapon in the plethora of weapons that we're already trying to build. So, and let's talk about um, Lad McConkey next. Lad McConkey was also asked about the possibility of reuniting with Todd Munkin. Uh, let's see what Lad had to say about that. Vlad, what was your experience with Todd Monk and how would you feel about reuniting with him in Baltimore? Yeah, no, he was, he, again, he was a great coach. Um, he did a lot for me. He, he gave me a chance um, that, that second year and uh, you know, went, went two natties together. So it, it was a special time. So, um, yeah, to be able to reunite with him, it, it'd really be, it'd be cool. So um, he's a great coach, great person. Um, and, I mean, they had a good, good year this past year as well. So he's such a talent. All right, now, Lad's a kid I have to go back and watch tape on, so I can't give you any kind of analysis on him yet. I can just give you his numbers so far at the University of Georgia. And we all known Georgia to be a run-dominant team. So with Lad, let's see what his stats are. He had 30 catches on 37 targets, which is a catch rate of over 80%. He had 483 yards. He only played in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Only played nine games. Only played nine games. So um, I don't know what the injury was that prevented him from playing those first four games, but he didn't play in the first four games. Played in games five through 12, the uh, conference championship game and the bowl game versus Florida State. So um, his contested catches, he had uh, five. No, he had two actually. So his contested catch percentage was 40%. He was two out of five. His drops, he only had two. He had one versus Vanderbilt and one versus Ole Miss. So. Fairly significant hands right there. And a lot of people are high on Lad. I personally, again, can't give you any analysis yet until I go back and watch the tape on him. But him being familiar with, with Todd Monk and him being one of the top receivers in the draft, that would be that would put some familiar, familiarity with, with Todd Monk. All right, let's get into the draft. I'm sorry, the combine itself. Uh, the day one stars for me. So we're going to do day one stars and day one red flags. So the main star for me, was uh, Braden Fitz from Florida State. 
and I guess this is going to be almost a Florida State dominated um, episode. But Braden Fitz, he had the fastest 40. If I'm not mistaken, he had the the biggest, the longest broad jump, the tallest vertical. And now when I was watching, I was watching somebody for LSU, and the very first play of the game, Braden Fitz split a double team, and um, I was watching my league neighbors. And Braden Fitz split a double teams and had Jaden Daniels on the run. And I was initially like, man, who was that? But I wasn't focused on it at the time, so I didn't really pay attention to who it was. So now I'm definitely going to be excited to go back and look at the tape and check out uh, Braden Fitz, man. His, his, he looked explosive. He looked fast. He looked big. He looked strong. He moved fluid. I think that young fella made himself a lot of money yesterday uh, at the Combine. He's one of the guys that the Combine helped, whereas a lot of times Combines hurt people or they, they are scared to be hurt. He went and did everything, and I think his pockets are going to thank him in about two or three months. Another day one star, Dallas Turner, the edge from, from Alabama. Like all the stuff that they talked about for, for Dallas, legit. Legit. Uh, I hope the tape matches it. I haven't watched the tape on him yet because, again, I try to stay away from the tape until the end of the year unless it's just a high-profile game. But – those two guys, as far as their height, weight, speed, how fluid they looked on the bags and the different drills, to me, they are the day one stars of the NFL Combine for the D-line and edge group. Now, some red flags. Now, this first red flag is a guy that's been mocked to Baltimore. It's Darius Robinson, the, Missouri, the edge from Missouri. His, his, he was 285-ish at weight. His 40 time was not very good. He didn't look very explosive in, in the drills. He, I don't want to say he was slow. He just looked, he didn't look very fluid. As when, you, when I compare him to what I saw with, with Fisk, I would take Fisk over him any day of the week. Now, when you go back and look at the tape, his tape may be better than Fisk. But I'm just talking about what I saw yesterday at the combine. And the second red flag I saw, which was really, really, really disappointing, was Braylon Trice. The defensive, the edge guy from Washington, um, he lost a lot of weight to try to be faster, and he still ended up running like a four-seven something. That you know, it was okay for for an edge guy. That's, that's okay, but he lost a lot of weight to try to run faster. But what bothered me was the drills. He didn't like he didn't take direction right. Didn't finish drills. Had to do them over and over. That a red flag in my my eyes, especially if you're not the first guy. If you're the first guy going. Maybe you get a little grace because you're trying to learn it or whatnot. But if it's not a new drill, you've seen the combine all your life. And then if you're not the first guy going, watch the people in front of you and pay attention so you can see what's going on. For him to have to do it over and mess up and have to – you shouldn't – this is the big, in, biggest interview of your life. You shouldn't have to be told to do something twice. And so I felt like that was a huge letdown for, for Trice, and I think he's going to fall way down. But he still may end up being a good uh, – um, football player. Let's think about how bad Orlando Brown's combine was. And Orlando Brown is a decent football player. So, we'll see. And lastly, I want to talk about my mock draft for this week. Let me get it pulled up. Alright, my mock draft for this week. So, I did it on PFF. and I'm going to put it on the screen so you can see it. So, we got to pick 30 and there was, there was nobody there that really jumped out to me. So, I traded back. I traded back. And we ended up picking up the tackle from BYU, uh, Kingsley, so Mateo, you know, and, and that got some extra picks to go with it. So we got the tackle. Secondly, we, in the second round, it's pick 62. We got Xavier Worthy, the speed star out of Texas. Um, his tape is not up on the, the channel yet, but definitely, it's definitely coming. When I hit the wide receivers, you're going to know it because it's going to be constant, constant, constant because y'all know I've coached wide receivers for the longest and I love wide receivers. So I try to stay away from them because once I start on them, I really kind of forget about the other position groups. Uh, third round pick 77. This is a guy that I really, really like. And again, going back to Florida State, uh, don't call me a homer because I live here, but I'm a Miami fan, but I'm living in Florida State's home spot. Jaron Jones. I love that cornerback from, from Florida State. I do. And the fact that he was still there, I had to pick him up. Going into the, still in the third round, which is one of the picks I required, acquired from my trade, I got the running back from Oregon, Bucky Irvin, who I really, really like. I really like. So going on down, got to the fourth round. Cooper Bebe was still on the board. Couldn't pass it up. Could not pass it up. So I picked up a tackle and a guard so far. 
I picked up Zach Zentner to be like a, um, now Zach Zentner don't necessarily fit what we do, but he can be a quality backup and maybe even be a starter because we know how well they run the ball in Michigan. And we know, even though we got receivers and trying to be this different kind of offense, we still a running team and Zentner would fit that, you know, as in a backup role and still to compete versus Salah, Cleveland and whoever else is there, you need competition. Uh, now, these next three picks are guys that I don't really know much about, but I just was trying to fill special teams roles. Steel Chambers from um, Ohio State traded again at this point to the Steelers just to get a couple more picks to try to fill some special teams roles. And with this safety pick, I was trying to find a big safety. I was trying to find a big safety that maybe we can put in the back to leave Kyle toward the line of scrimmage. And I don't know much about Kitan, and so I picked him again. Don't know much about him yet, but I will go back and do some research. And lastly, I picked up a tight end to – to just to give Kolar some, some uh, competition, not to just let him sit in that third tight end spot and be comfortable, just to give him some, some competition down there to make him work. And who knows, maybe even that guy will beat him out. But the PFF graded my draft a B. The worst pick I had was uh, Zach Zinner with the C minus. The best pick I had was Xavier Worthy in the second round with a B plus. But there's a lot of Bs on there, and you see it for yourself. So this is all I have for, mo not Monday, Friday, March 1st, 2024. And I appreciate you guys for rocking with me. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And again, if you like the video, like the video. Drop your comments about anything that we talked about today. Hit that subscribe button if you're not done so. And we're working on our way to 10K, man. I appreciate y'all, and I'll see y'all soon. Peace.